We're going to do this uh, great show on declaring a foreclosure prevention zone uh, here in Mendocino County. We've got uh, two great guests. We got uh, uh, C.J. Holmes and uh, Tim Nan. Uh, Tim is a, a longtime community organizer. He's also got a Ph.D. in philosophy, and he's been a chapler in the uh, Tenderloin District, which is uh, what was the basis of his doctoral dissertation. Uh, Tim, why don't you why don't we start out with you and uh, introducing you uh, to our audience? Tell us a little bit a little bit about yourself. Thanks, John. When I was working my doctorate, I worked for four years in the Tenderloin District of San Francisco because I wanted to study the way the religious community was responding to the poor, the urban poor. And I served uh, there as a chaplain for people with HIV AIDS and then lived in one of the slum hotels for a year to have a full experience. What was the title of your dissertation? Oh God, it was so boring and academic. <laughs> I can't even remember it. <laughs> okay. CJ, tell us a little bit about your long, uh, your long career in real estate. Well, I'm CJ Holmes, real estate broker, and be became involved in real estate because I purchased property as an investor and had this thought that if a smart person who really cared about the results for the client actually did the transactions, the client would make more money. And now I've been able to prove that. I've done hundreds of transactions. But in the process, I've, of course, analyzed the markets in ways that most people don't even think about and could see in 09, I actually did a little video, it's on YouTube, about rescuing foreclosures because I could see where we were headed. And turns out that's where we are. We have lost tremendous amounts of equity in the market and it's not over. A lot of people don't want to hear that, but this is the truth. And so I've... When Tim started Occupy Petaluma and focused on foreclosures, stopping foreclosures, and I read the article in the Press Democrat, that day we got in touch because I said, I have solutions. I know how to solve this problem, but I need somebody to listen. And it's just gone from there. All right, we're going to get to your solution in a second, and we're going to start mm -hmm. out with you, CJ, because you're the real estate expert. Tim, you're the organizer. Um, uh, CJ, earlier this week, as you know, a um, uh, report came out that we're at a, a low since the uh, since the uh, uh, the financial crisis started in 2000 late 2007 we're at a low in foreclosures um, uh, all-time low over the last uh, three four years and uh, that seems like we're in a I don't know in a complacent state uh, can we expect a tsunami of foreclosures and why well, it's really fascinating that you would call it a low, because I have a chart right here that talks about, if this is low, we still have 6 million homes in the pipeline in from 30, 60, 90 day default and foreclosures. That's what a lot of people don't even think about or talk about, is how many people have stopped paying. They're in the pipeline. We can't, we don't really see those. They're not counted, they're not talked about very much, but they're there. They're not talking about the other, the additional 5 million, there's 11 million loans upside down in this country. And that's 22% of the loan portfolio of this, of the wow. United States. So the, the, just because it's down doesn't mean it's going to stop. And of course, just this week, Tim forwarded articles to me about the uh, ramping up of foreclosures this year, how they're going to take back millions of homes and also articles that talked about who's actually in charge of deciding how these foreclosures are handled and that's one of the real concerns we have today. Well yeah also this week during the Christmas break actually it was two weeks ago during the Christmas break um, I don't know if, if you're aware of this but the the Fed who guards it fiercely regard, uh, guards their independence sent uh, the various financial services committees uh, in Congress a memo warning them of the looming crisis in foreclosures. It was, uh, I believe the, um, I believe the memo was called uh, the foreclosure crisis or we a nation in denial and they talked about uh, not just how unemployment, high unemployment is a serious risk to the economy but uh, perhaps even a more serious risk to the economy is the impending foreclosure crisis. Um, very surprising uh, because again the, the Fed hardly 
speaks at all publicly, hardly speaks, hardly initiates any comment, and when they do, it's usually very limited. But in that memo, and I'm quoting from the memo, they're talking about a costly and inefficient foreclosure process. They're talking about problems in the current model uh, for servicing mortgages. And quoting from the, uh, the memo itself, uh, about policies, uh, the adjustment process will take longer, pushing housing prices even lower, thereby uh, pro prolonging the downward pressure on the wealth of, of the current homeowner and the resultant drag on the recovery at large. Wow. What do you think, CJ? Well, I think I exactly. It's, he's exactly right. I'm glad somebody is speaking up because at this point, for the last two and a half years, I feel that nobody has addressed the problem. The fact of the matter is, with housing prices now down b so far below construction cost, that's why we have such high unemployment. Every plumber, electrician, painter, developer, and all the people that did underground work and all the retail supplies for building houses is completely gone. There's a few buildings, of course, but the, the majority, the vast, 75% of the construction industry was decimated. So it, that cannot come back until we get our housing values back. Now, the fact, if you look at my site, www.occupy-our-homes.info you can read simple explanations how the crash started what has what's happened to the values in the property for example in Mendocino County since 2008 the average home price has dropped 43 percent the wow. average home price now is 239 it was 421 wow the median has dropped 36 percent over a hundred and twenty four thousand dollars and last year in 2011 sixty eight percent of the sales were distressed that and and what people don't count and I'm trying to get this news out every time a homeowner loses a home to foreclosure or short sale they cannot get a loan to buy a home whether they even if they have good credit good cash uh, reserves and a good job they can't get a loan for three years at this time, if you just count the last 36 months in the 11 counties of the San Francisco Bay Area, which would include Mendocino, there's over 82,000 families that can't get a loan, and we only sell, this market only sells 55,000 homes a year. So we were 18 months of locking buyers out. So if you don't have the buyers, you can't sell the houses, you have to keep lowering the prices. Right, right. Tim, we're going to shoot to you. As a community organizer, what are progressives doing? Well, the, the first thing and the most important thing that people have to understand is that the foreclosure crisis is a crime scene and that Wall Street has created the perfect scheme to kill the American dream. And unless you understand that, you're going to continue to be afraid and feeling powerless because the only we don't have a lot of power in terms of money and staff I mean um, I had to call my mom this morning to get some information from her about this man who was just appointed the chief of staff last week by President Obama he's the guy who stands in the doorway and decides who President Obama talks to this man Jacob Liu was formerly the chief operating officer at Citigroup for the Alternative Investments Unit, and what, what that odd name means is that he was betting against the housing crisis. So they, they, were, they got us into this mess, they crashed the economy, and now they have put a, they've occupied the White House. Wall Street has occupied the White House, and at the same time, the agency that President Obama set up to solve the foreclosure crisis, which is called the Federal Housing Finance Agency, the director's office is empty. So the person who's supposed to be protecting us homeowners, protecting the American dream, that office is empty while Wall Street has occupied the White House. And so we have to understand that this crime scene is still going on, and there's only one way we can stop this, because we can accept, expect Wall Street and the government to, to solve this crisis. They're not going to solve this crisis. Only communities are. So we've created this model at OccupyPeluma.com of the foreclosure prevention zone. Basi the basic idea is that the community is the solution. 
you know, we, we all suffer from this disease of rugged individualism in the West. But until we come together as communities, we're not going to be able to save our homes. And, and it, it's not right just to blame the homeowners for making mistakes. I was foreclosed by Wells Fargo about a year and a half ago. And, and sure, maybe I made mistakes, but 20 million Americans didn't make mistakes, including those people whose homes values have gone down. Did they make mistakes? Did the cities throughout California who are suffering so greatly because of loss of tax revenues because of the foreclosure crisis, did they, are they to blame? No, this was the perfect scheme concocted by Wall Street to kill the American dream. And unless we understand that, we're not going to be able to solve it. Well, I often take the devil's advocate position on this show, so um, I'm going to fire away here. Uh, when you say Wall Street killed the American dream, Wall Street doesn't do anything unless there's a profit motive. When Wall Street kills the American dream, who's making money? We see this as three steps. The first step was they created toxic loans. They simply did not do underwriting. They, they threw money away because it wasn't theirs. So they packaged these pools of loans. They're called CDOs, collateralized debt obligations, which were sold on Wall Street. And when you think of the people that bought, I like to think of our pension funds because those are the entities that bought this. So it's a triple whammy. The pension fund is losing value. Uh, we're losing value in our homes, and then, of course, insiders like uh, Tim pointed out, Jacob Liu, with that, with the banks betting against these the failure of these uh, collateralized debt obligations, they made millions of dollars in that process. Now, we see the third step. Oh, the White House and the government, they, they do have a solution, but it's a really scary one. Two articles came out this week. One is government set to sell foreclosures in bulk, and they're going to be selling to the private hedge funds. So, what's what we see happening? I want you to I, I want you to say more about that. Uh, so, s again, pr Wall Street only does something if, uh, if they make money at it, and uh, we've seen in deregulation just the the proliferation of swaps and derivatives, credit default swaps. Uh, credit uh, uh, collateralized debt obligations, as you talk talk about, as you just mentioned, as collateralized uh, mortgage obligations, tranches of mortgages. Yes. Um, uh, uh, the consequences are undercapitalized banks, banks that are doing very little risk management, and in some cases uh, outright bank fraud. And this is not just contained to the United States of America, but because the uh, the uh, financial system and financial markets are truly global in nature, it's now extending uh, to the eurozone and dragging dragging down the European economy, which is what's beaten down the market lately. Um, all as a result of deregulation. Explain how a hedge fund makes money with these obligations. What what, what you just said? Elaborate on it. Well, they're not going to be buying the CDOs. Correct. They're buying the foreclosures, the Fannie and Freddie properties that they foreclosed on. So they are making a deal with the president to buy tens of thousands of homes, and they will just be a landlord. They will collect rent wow. out of these people that now can't get a loan because they have a foreclosure on their credit. So, so they're locked out. These people call me. They say, do you have any properties for sale with seller financing? They're trying to buy a home, but they're locked out. So while the banks lock them out with the rules, and the reason the banks do that is FHA rules. It's, it's government rules that the banks are following because they are scared to death. If they make a loan, they can't wholesale it unless they follow the rules. So you've got these, these big pressures. They've locked the people out. Now they're going to give the foreclosures to a hedge fund who can now make ooh gobs of money renting to them. But the kicker is the appreciation because when the market does recover, when, when it comes back into balance, we're calculating the gain to be at least 100000 Let me tell you, I'm looking right now for investor clients in Solano County. The houses are $80,000. You can rent them for 1200 a month. And you have to insure them for 180000 because that's what it would cost to replace. So if you multiplied a million foreclosed homes given to the hedge funds and they all you know, balanced out when the market recovers at a hundred thousand gain, you're talking a trillion dollars. 
Tim, uh, I'm tempted to pontificate at this point. I mean, we've we've seen here America uh, losing basically it, their homes. Mm -hmm. uh, if you couple that with uh, the attack on unions that we've seen and the and the loss of collective bargaining rights by uh, many unions um, across the country, we're looking at the not we're looking at the death of the middle class. Am, am I pontificating? Am I too being too much of a of a knee jerk liberal here, or do, did I get it right? Yeah, you got it right. I, I mean, that's what people have got to wake up to, is that the middle class is being destroyed in in the United States, and mainly because middle income people, most of their wealth is in their homes. It's not, they don't have a lot of stocks and bonds like the rich. Right. The poor can't afford homes. So when Wall Street developed this perfect scheme to kill the American dream, Basically, they said, hmm, let's look at the wealth of the middle class. How can we take that away from them? They're turning the country into a nation of renters, and rents are going up. And, and people can barely survive. I know people who are dropping out of the middle class right and left. I know banker, lo local bankers in Petaluma who've been foreclosed. I know people in charge of foreclosure prevention programs are being foreclosed. I know clergy, retired clergy who are being foreclosed. It, it's affecting everyone. And... It affects everyone in a different way, whether your home is underwater or you're being foreclosed or you lose your job or your small business goes under because people are moving out of the community. We have to understand that until we learn to come together as a community, we're not going to be able to solve this problem. Before the show, we got a call from uh, our good friend Norman Duvall, who is opposite me every other Friday. And uh, CJ, you spoke to him, I think, correct? Yes. And uh, we were talking about uh, how banks uh, may be incentivized, actually, to foreclose. Explain that to our listeners. Well, uh, it, it, I'll try to simplify it. When the banks sold these loans to the collateralized debt obligations, they kept the servicing rights. So the banks are the middlemen. And this is something that a lot of people don't quite understand. They say to me, well, I keep calling them, and why won't they work with me? Well, because it's not their money. They, they are servicing a note in default, and every month that goes by, they get more money for it out of the end result. Eventually, if you just take a, a property, this, oh, and by the way, for loan modifications, did you know that the banks are paid to consider the loan mod, not do it? This is why they tend to deny you and then try to incentivize you to reapply. Every time you reapply, ka-ching, they get a thousand bucks from the government out of our pockets. So anyway, back to the banks will tend to not deny, deny, deny loan mods and finally they foreclose. They get the servicing fees, they get the property management fees, they get part of the commission fees for selling the house and all of that money comes out of the net proceeds to the actual owner of the note, which is the CDO investors, our pension funds. So they are basically playing both sides against, th they're in the middle. They're keeping as much as they can for themselves. We call it extend and pretend. Because they lobbied the government and got the government to agree that they did not have to mark to market their portfolios. So they have these millions of loans that are all underwater, but they can pretend that they're still worth the value that they loaned on them. However, on Main Street, Every time that appraiser comes out and says, that house is now worth X, that shaves the equity off of everybody in that neighborhood. Right. You know, uh, uh, I was going to ask a little bit later in the show, but now that we, we've, uh, we've uh, stumbled upon uh, the issue, I wanted to talk about the loan modification program that the Obama administration um, enacted into law and uh, believes is the, um, is the magic bullet. Uh, by my way of thinking, uh, the, the, big, the two big loan originators, uh, uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, sold the loans to investors. Um, and, and for that reason, homeowners don't qualify uh, for these uh, workouts and this restructuring and the loan modifications. Do I have that right, Tim? Yeah, but I think CJ can address that better than me. Okay. But that's right. See, I, I think that Fannie and Freddie bought those notes. They were the wholesaler purchasers. So there's, they own that. That's why they have such heartburn and are so upside down. And that's why the government says, oh my goodness, what are we going to do with all these homes? Uh, one of my solutions 
is that they would actually sell those homes to those people that can't qualify for a bank loan rather than giving those homes over to a hedge fund to net the spread on and to make the appreciation do, do some Fannie Freddie seller financing so that the people that qualify to pay the mortgage they just have a foreclosure or short sale ding so they don't qualify for a bank loan let them buy one of these foreclosures so that they can get back into home ownership that would actually save our communities save our property tax revenues keep people in the homes would help reduce some of that rental pressure uh, of course it would take the profits away from the hedge fund guys uh, i'm all for that well you you uh, you'd be taking uh, bain capital <laughs> i think they're in the business too <laughs> you know we uh, tend not to uh, pol want to politicize our show but we have uh, we have uh, candidates for the white house who are profiting uh, tim yeah that that's a really good point because Lately, um, Rick Perry and Newt Gingrich have been accusing Mitt Romney of being a vulture capitalist. And so I think most of us aren't against capitalism. We're just against vulture capitalism, which is uh, pushing people out of their homes. And we're trying to figure out, and we're not experts. I mean, I, I can barely keep up with CJ. She's, you know, such an expert on foreclosure prevention. But you know, and my background is in ethics, so I don't really, I, I'm learning slowly about all these things, but what I know is that people are good. People are generally good. That's what I know. And most people have a capacity for love. So we're not just talking about anger toward the banks. I'm, we're, we're dealing very closely with Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo's reached out to us and they, they've helped us find ways to keep people in their homes. So we're not broad brushing all the banks. You know, some of them are, are really good, especially the community-based banks like Redwood Credit Union. So so we don't want to just operate out of anger. We want to operate out of love. And, and one thing I learned in working in the Tenderloin is that it's really easy to label people. Like it, you say, okay, these poor, poor people are criminals. So when you apply for food stamps, all your data goes into the criminal justice system to see if you have an outstanding warrant. And a lot of times poor people are being labeled as criminals. And so we could say, well, everyone who's lost their home is morally wrong. They, they messed up in some ways. But it's really, it's, it's, a, it's a system. It's like a mach impersonal machine that's chewing up all these homeowners. And, and really, I feel like the only way to solve this is to learn to love one another. You might not like going down and getting out in the streets and meeting some of your neighbors to work on this, but that's what you need to do. You need to go to the Facebook page of Occupy Mendocino and go and meet some of these folks. And, and that's what we did in Petaluma. We, we, we're, we're learning to work to, together as strangers to learn how to become neighbors. You know, that's an interesting point, Sam, because uh, in the Occupy Wall Street movement, they were actually uh, joining uh, joining the uh, you know the, those that who you would expect uh, to be demonstrating. A lot of times were the younger people who worked on Wall Street. Um, uh, uh, I've I've always described myself. I've had a 30-year career on Wall Street. I've always described myself as a blue-collar worker on Wall Street. Traders are blue-collar workers. I worked on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange for Spear Leeds and on the floor of the Comex and the Merck for Merrill Lynch. Um, and even when I was wearing a white collar, when I went into institutional sales and product management, <laughs> if there was, you know, Wall Street works on a boom-bust cycle. It, they go on hiring binges, and then with every bear market, they purge. So, you know, we, <laughs> my career, I get hired, you make a lot of money, there's a bear market, I got laid off, and it starts all over again. Um, and, uh, it, it, again, you have to, you can't label, I don't think you can label, um, all of Wall Street. You can certainly label the one percent, but there, but not everyone who works on Wall Street is the one percent. That is for darn sure. And I'm here to to uh, to testify to that. We're talking about uh, creating a foreclosure-free zone here in Mendocino County. We're talking to uh, um, uh, C.J. Holmes, a real estate expert, and uh, Tim Non, a, a community organizer. Uh, we're talking about that seven trillion dollars in home equity has disappeared since 2006. Um, that's more than half of the uh, home equity in the United States. 
Um, how does this loss affect our nation's net worth? How does it play into high unemployment? Uh, we know that it does because uh, the uh, Federal Reserve just uh, sent a memo out to uh, the Financial Services Committee in the House and the Banking Committee in the Senate warning of this crisis. And then f immediately following that, immediately following that, you had a governor of the, of the Federal Reserve, Betsy Duke, also speaking to that memo. And you had two presidents of Fed branches, the one in New York and the one in Boston, uh, 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 echoing uh, what that memo said. Uh, we want to get to solutions. Tim, I want to talk as a community organizer, and we'll get to you, CJ, because you're a little bit more technical, what workouts look like and what restructuring look like and, and maybe what new laws should look like. But Tim, as an organizer, what do we, where do I go for, I leave the studio. What, where do I go from here? I go to Fort Bragg on Sunday and I, I hook up with the uh, Occupy Mendocino people. What do I do? Okay, we've created a model for the foreclosure prevention zone on our website, OccupyPetaluma.com. There's a tab that says foreclosure crisis. So we've spelled it all out there on, on how to create a foreclosure prevention zone in your community. If we can get cities in Sonoma County and Mendocino County to declare themselves foreclosure prevention zones and for instance in Petaluma the city council is going to pass a, a resolution on supporting that then we can go to the boards of supervisors in these two counties if that happens we can give the whole state a model and then the whole country a model and I, I think a lot of times people feel powerless that the first hurdle they have to overcome is feeling like nothing they will do will make any difference and I can tell you when when I was foreclosed a year and a half ago I, I didn't tell anybody, not even people in my church about it, because I was so ashamed. I felt like I had failed my family and my son. And I'm sure some people feel like I, I did that, but but I kept quiet. And, and a lot of these people who are being foreclosed, they, they hide. Shame. They, they, out of shame, right. right. And, and But when the Occupy movement came along, all of a sudden, I found my voice. And that's the power that we have, is we find our voices by being in community with one another. And um, and when we find our voice, what can we do with that voice? We can speak truth. We can say it's wrong for Wall Street to occupy the White House and Congress. It's wrong to leave that office empty. It, it, at, Federal Housing Finance Agency who's supposed to solve the foreclosure crisis for homeowners. We can speak the truth and uh, to power and the truth has a lot of power and and we've got to learn as communities to say to government and the banks and Wall Street uh, you, you can't just expect us to keep silent and to disappear. We're not going away because we love our communities. Excellent answer. I'm speechless. CJ, let's, let's talk about more of the technical uh, uh, answer to this problem. Uh, how can we stop this tsunami of foreclosures that we can expect? Uh, we talked about the deregulation of Wall Street. How can we re-regulate uh, the mortgage industry? Well, I do know two things. Number one, the banks and the government do not like negative media attention. And so the very first thing we need to do, I think two things, we need each individual needs to just send an email to me at occupy at cjhomes.com and pick a plan. I have five solutions. These, these plans would keep people in their homes, number one, would put people that have been foreclosed back into a home, would allow those people that are upside down to refinance at current market rates so they could keep their home, and if the home foreclosure is still vacant, I believe that owner should be reinstated into that house. Now, the fact is, on Monday, we read that the government is ready to do, the White House, a trial program of selling hundreds of thousands of homes, Fannie and Freddie foreclosures, to large investment funds, like hedge funds. It says a pilot sales program will be starting in the very near future. So I love foreclosure prevention zones. We need to do that. But to get city councils to meet and pass resolutions takes time. I don't think we have the time. I think we need an outpouring of thousands of people demanding to one of these solutions. Because then we can 
tap the media and we could say, look, 10,000 people, 100,000, a million people want to keep their homes. So administration, stop, cease and desist, stop what you're doing, let us work out a plan so that we can keep our real estate rather than selling it off to the rich. So you have five workout solutions on your website. Yes, and it's what's on the home page. And, uh, what, and what's that site again? Occupy-our-homes.info and the plans are basically one, the owners be allowed to buy their home short. Right now, anybody on the planet except the owner, their family, and a terrorist can buy a property short. <laughs> it, it can be cash from Saudi Arabia, no offense, but anybody can buy it except the owner. That is so wrong. The owner should have first chance to buy their home short. And trust me, everybody I talk to agrees. They would actually even pay more than market value to keep the home. Okay. People love their homes. So that's solution number one. Solution one. number two. Owner loans to be modified with a principal reduction to market value. Because the fact of the matter is, what good is it if you're gonna your interest rate is lowered a point for five years when you still owe five hundred thousand dollars on a property that's now worth three hundred? Mm -hmm. People are gonna say that doesn't make any sense. So that's number two. Number three. There's a whole bunch of middle class people, by the way, that six million loans that are in default, half of them are prime. We're not talking subprime, we're not talking negams, we're not talking alt A, pick a pay type properties and loans. We're talking about prime middle class homeowners and they're looking at each other and they're saying the same thing. They're saying, am I a chump for paying my mortgage? Because my house is several hundred thousand upside down. What hope do I ever have that it will ever come back to that value? Next solution. So if their current loan is upside down, they want to be able to refinance at the current market right. rate. Right. Makes sense. And then the fourth solution for those that were foreclosed and their house is sitting vacant because trust me, no matter what the banks say to the media, there are millions of homes that are vacant. One article I read was 18 million in the nation. They're vacant homes. These banks don't want to list them because they're afraid they're going to swamp the market. I think that if the owner lost the home, they ought to have a chance to be reinstated, get their house back. And the fifth solution? Uh, the, all those people that got locked out, their homes are now gone, they've been sold to somebody else, they can't get a loan because of their three-year forced wait, that if they qualify to actually make a payment, and, and a loan on a home is going to be cheaper, the principal interest taxes and insurance price would be cheaper than rent. So they ought to be allowed to buy. Wow. Tim? Yeah, I, I have a, something people can start doing right away is I, I said previously that Wall Street has occupied the White House and Congress. This is literally true that Wall Street told President Obama, we want you to appoint the guy who crashed the economy because of the housing crisis as your chief of staff. They ordered him to appoint this guy as his chief of staff. This at the same time, Brit Jacob Liu, Jacob Liu, from Citigroup. At the same time, Obama is leaving the office at the agency who's supposed to fix the foreclosure crisis empty. Now, the California delegation this week has told President Obama he needs to appoint a permanent director. There's a temporary director, Edward DeMarco. People need to call the White House and tell them, don't just take orders. This is, you know, let's say the truth here. I was talking about the truth. This is pure political corruption. That Wall Street has corrupted Congress and the White House. They gave President Obama 68, I'm a Democrat, and I'm angry at what's going on. They gave him $68 million in the last few weeks, and then all of a sudden he appoints this guy. This is political corruption. And, and we need to demand, along with the California delegation, that they put somebody in charge of the agency who's supposed to fix the foreclosure crisis and don't just take orders from Wall Street, take orders from the American people. Well, let's talk about California. Um, California has been devastated by, uh, by the foreclosures and the drop in property values. Its budget has been shot to pieces because uh, of, uh, of the, the fall in both income taxes, uh, sales taxes, and property taxes. 
why hasn't Governor Brown and the state legislature offered some leadership on solving the foreclosure prior process? <laughs> He's been pretty silent. And and it, it, a report um, that CJ has there says every foreclosed home costs cities and counties about twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollars for foreclosure processing fees, sheriff evictions, lost utility utility bills that aren't unpaid that aren't paid and and so the banks foreclose a home and then us taxpayers have to pay th for that expense and then city services are cut back and in Petaluma we got lots of potholes that aren't being filled I, I don't know why our gov our elected leaders have not come up with more solutions but I do know this Lots and lots and lots of people don't really understand the problem and don't have a solution. We're given solutions. Here, we can fix this. Mm -hmm. So maybe they'll get behind us and help support it. Okay, here's my thought, too, about county government. And just tell me whether I'm off base. Local governments probably pick up the biggest part of the tab for foreclosures. Um, not only do you have a, 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 a dramatic drop in property uh, values, uh, but you have a... Uh, corresponding drop in property taxes, and you if for every foreclosure you have a, an average of twenty thousand that's spent in uh, blighted properties, trash removal, inspections, unpaid utility bills, sheriff evictions, and so forth and so on. It seems to me that maybe counties uh, across California should um, uh, declare themselves foreclosure. Uh, free zones? Yes. Absolutely. And everybody in every county and every city and every state in this whole country should rise up, even even property owners that aren't, in risk, aren't at risk of losing their properties. They need to help declare foreclosure prevention zones. Otherwise, all their equity is gone too. We're all sliding down the hill. And again, if, you don't, if we don't stop it, then we're all just facing this so, devastation. So even if you're some fat cat, this foreclosure crisis is affecting you. You're well, if you're a real fat cat, then you just want it to keep devastated okay. so that you can buy it. But, but like, say, uh, say you're, I don't know, a doctor or a lawyer uh, or another professional, um, and your neighbors are being foreclosed on you. Say, oh, all right, I, I, can, I live in a state of denial. But that's not true because your property values are falling too. And, and, with, the prop and with that, uh, uh, taxes are falling and county services are falling. True? A absolutely, and unfunded pension liabilities, because the pension funds bought this stuff. Oh, we didn't so, even go there yet. <laughs> and, and so, truly, I mean, Sonoma County is just in a yes. world of hurt, because not, a, regardless of the fact that some of the um, people in the county government, you know, voted themselves some really nice pension benefits that they're now trying to figure out how to unwind, the fact is we have all this pension fund unfunded liabilities because the values dropped. We lost millions of dollars. Right. Everybody has everywhere. Don't get me started. That's a uh, that's a been a I've do, done this show for four years. That's been a constant theme. What what people what a lot of people don't know is that the biggest pension plans like Calpers and CalStars have been the biggest buyers of uh, collateralized mortgage obligations and debt obligations. So they're they're holding the bag on this stuff. Meanwhile, the guys that sold it to them, like Goldman Sachs, have sold short the very same securities. In other words, they're profiting as... A absolutely. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's crazy. We're going to take a couple of calls. And, uh, we're speaking with Timothy uh, Nan, a member of Occupy Petaluma, freelance writer, author of many articles, essays, also a poet and a former pastor, or maybe he's still a pastor. He's a pastor in this studio right now, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> there are not that many guests who talk about truth and love <laughs> on this show, <laughs> but we're doing it today. Editor of several books, has a PhD in ethics, a long history of community organizer. Um, he is also, and we didn't talk about it, uh, perhaps because he's too modest, he's been a national organizer in two social movements, the Sanctuary Movement uh, from 1981 to 86, and the Defor Movement, 2004 to 2008. Um, uh, we we're also speaking with real estate expert C.J. Holmes, has worked in the industry since 1996, believes that 8 million homes have already foreclosed, another 6 million are in the pipeline. That mu much of this country will not belong to the citizens by the time the hedge funds own their properties. Uh, we have uh, two wonderful websites that uh, both of our guests have that we'll get back to, but first I want to take a couple of calls. Listener, you're on the line. Yeah, hi, this is John Llewellyn. I'm a 
Kennedy for uh, U.S. Congress up here. Good morning, John. Good morning, and uh, I, I wonder uh, what, what should I be advocating to solve this uh, foreclosure crisis uh, 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 as a congressional candidate? Good question. Thank you, John. Yeah. Well, have pre as President Obama to appoint a permanent director of the Federal House Finance Housing Agency for starters. And stop him from his trial program of selling foreclosures to hedge funds. Do you think every candidate will embrace that agenda, John? Well, let's listen. Uh, Sunday evening, I'm going up to a debate. I hope you all get on the same page. I thought maybe we should stop this uh, law that says you have to wait three years to get your foreclosure before you can actually buy another place. And I well, I hope you've taken some notes from the show and raised exactly. all these issues. Thank, thank. A absolutely, and get everybody you ever talk to to at least sign up. If we can have thousands, millions of people on the list, then we have some voice. They'll listen to us. Absolutely. Thank you for your call, John. Listener, you're on the air. Good. Let's keep re repeating these websites. I know we, we need to. The, the, the solutions are occupy-our-homes.info and occupypetaluma.com and click the foreclosure crisis tab. And uh, doesn't Occupy Mendocino have a Facebook page too? Right. Yeah, www.facebook.com forward slash uh, Occupy Mendocino. Yeah, right on. All right. Thank you, Al. Uh, I want to say on the OccupyOurHomes.info, on the home page, right under the sign up to keep your home, A, because I basically said it's simply request to keep a home, add community clout, get ready to pass state laws. Under A is a little link that you can just print a flyer. Print the flyer and pass it out. Stand in front of Safeway and give it to everybody. We're, uh, the, po the calls are pouring in. Let's keep at it. Listener, you're on the air. Uh, good morning. Uh, a point and a question. Uh, the point is that um, Bill Black, who many people know about, a former bank regulator who is now a professor um, in the Midwest, has repeatedly said that every step on the way is a fraud, from the origination of the mortgages to the overinflation of values that made the loans uh, higher to the foreclosure crisis. It's all a massive fraud. And he wants us to keep using the term liar's loan because that's really <laughs> that's correct. these work. Anyway, the question is, um, you know, in the origination of a lot of these mortgages and passing them up through the pipeline to Wall Street, uh, many of the banks and brokers use the mortgage electronic registration system, or MERS. MERS. And what this did was it was an end run around paying various city and county taxes and fees that are supposed to be paid when mortgages are originated. And so what would be the possibility of some sort of a class action lawsuit in which counties all got together and said, look, you know, we lost out in millions of dollars in fees for these guys, and now we're taking it here uh, in the end game where we're having to uh, incur all these expenses because of the foreclosure. What would the possibilities of a bunch of aggressive people getting together and filing and I'll take my answer off the air. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tim, has got, Tim has got a good answer to that question. Yeah, you put your finger on a key problem. Um, the 50 attorneys general throughout the United States have been negotiating for over a year with the big five banks on um, the foreclosure fraud. And the Obama administration wants to have a civil settlement for $25 billion that the banks would pay to states for foreclosure fraud. But now, California Attorney General Kamala Harris and, and other attorney generals are saying, no, we want to sue the banks for foreclosure fraud, and including the MERS system, the Mortgage Electronic Registration System. So we're hoping that Kamala Harris sticks to her guns and, and sues the banks for fraud and puts some bank executives and Wall Street executives in jail.
I would like to point out that this is the next horrible problem coming down the pike, and that is the MERS foreclosure, the MERS recording. What you gotta understand is since the banks did that, now that they've taken these properties and they're foreclosing on them, MERS was not always correct. And so we have a tremendous number of these foreclosures actually have clouded title. Most buyers cave in. They use agents that, you know, don't want to fight the system for whatever reason. They use the seller's escrow and the seller hires attorneys to sign paperwork for them and they get some title company to insure the title even though it's clouded. So we're going to have a huge mess down the road because all these people are buying properties they have no idea that the title is clouded. They're not going to be able to sell. I want to uh, mention uh, where you can meet our, uh, our two guests uh, this weekend. Uh, on Saturday uh, you have uh, January the 14th we have the Occupy General Assembly in Fort Bragg. On Sunday the 15th at 1030 at the Evergreen Methodist Church at uh, 200 North uh, Corey Street in Fort Bragg. Uh, uh, Tim Nan uh, from uh, our guest here from Occupy Petaluma will talk on uh, forgiving our debts. Interesting that, uh, Tim, I wanted to talk about that. The Lord's Prayer <laughs> is, is not just forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, but forgive us our debts. Isn't that true that those, those two words, sins and debts, are interchangeable? Right, yeah, the, it, it's been used in different ways, interpreted in different ways, but what Jesus was referring to when he taught his disciples that prayer is the Jubilee year, where every 50 years um, you, the debt gets wiped out. And and the the basic concept, and I'm going to be talking about that at my sermon at, at the church in, on Sunday, is that uh, nobody owns all of the the earth. It's, it's our gift to share with one another. So the idea is that we get out of balance. And every 50 years, maybe, we, we get so out of balance and 1% own most of the, the property and 99% are debtors. And, and this is a way of restoring the balance within ourselves as individuals and society. For more information uh, about uh, Tim Sermon, uh, go to Occupy Mendocino Foreclosure Committee, and I'll give out their number. And that's uh, 964-3711. On Sunday the 15th, on Martin Luther King Celebration at the Casper Community Center, which is located at, at uh, 15051 on Casper Road, um, uh, there will be a hot lunch served at the Casper Community Center. And at 1 p.m., uh, Tim will be uh, speaking on the injustice of the foreclosure crisis. Donations requested, but no one will be turned away for lack of funds. Uh, needed one or two people to help pull materials together. Um, on Sunday the 15th from 3 to 5, the Occupy movement will be occupying the Banks protest at uh, Maine and Alder in Fort Bragg. Uh, let's see, on Tuesday the 17th at 6 p.m. there will be a sign-making night for the Occupy the Courts protest on January 21st at noon in front of Bank of America in Fort Bragg. Cardboard and paint will be provided for those interested in making a sign. Bread and soup available for, for uh, participants. Um, RSVP Agnes at uh, let's see nine three seven two three seven seven, and uh, here right here at KZYX on of uh, and this is all uh, connected because we we're coming up on the two year anniversary of the Supreme Court's disastrous ruling in the Citizens United versus the Federal Election Co Commission, um, right here on the Com uh, Corporations and Democracy show. Uh, they will feature uh, national and local activists discussing uh, the two-year-old citizens, uh, uh, United Citizens for Supreme Court decision. Um, I'm a big fan of that show. Uh, I uh, almost always listen to it. Great show, and it will be on uh, this uh, disastrous Supreme Court decision. And on Friday the 21st, the Occupy Courts protest will be in front of the Bank of America in Fort Bragg. Uh, join in protesting the two-year uh, two anniversary of this disastrous Supreme Court ruling that allows corporations to spend unlimited funds in trying to influence not just our elections but our banking laws and our mortgage laws, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. And then the final thing I wanted to mention on the state level, uh, there's, at the state level um, there's a rally to overturn Citizens United Saturday the 21st from 1 to 3 p.m. at the California State Capitol building 
at 1315 10th Street, Sacramento. The rally is critical to building momentum for the Assembly Joint Resolution 22. We were talking about uh, what's, what's, where's the, why the void in leadership uh, at the state on some of these issues. Well, here's Assembly Joint Resolution 22, a bill before the California State Legislature which calls on the United States Congress to ratify and to send to the states an amendment that would overturn Citizens United and quote, re quoting the bill, the resolution, restore constitutional rights and fair elections to the people, thus ending corporate personhood and allowing limitations on all forms of spending. Um, California could be the second state after Hawaii to proclaim its legislature stands ready and eager to ratify a constitutional amendment over, o uh, overturning Citizens United. Again, that's rally to overturn Citizens United, Saturday the 21st from 1 to 3 p.m. at the California State Capitol Building, 1315 10th Street, Sacramento, California. I want to, uh, uh, f uh, before we uh, leave, and the phone calls just keep coming in. So maybe we'll have you back. Is that possible? Sure. And I'd just like to say one thing to any listeners who might be facing foreclosure. I've gone through that process. I collaborated with Wall Street by disappearing myself and not speaking out because I was ashamed. Let me, I just want to say to you, you have nothing to be ashamed of. Don't let your shame and your fear keep you isolated and disappeared. Join together with the people who are working on creating a foreclosure prevention zone in Mendocino. Come forward, find your voice, find your power in truth and love. Repeat your website once again. We've got uh, two minutes here before the end of the show, and I want to... Uh, I want the listeners to be able to uh, to follow up uh, with each one of you and to mobilize uh, to have a New Year's resolution to take some kind of action. The uh, website is www.occupy-our-homes.info and occupypetaluma.com. On my site, the Occupy Our Homes, go to events streaming and check out on the January 24th from 7 to 10 at the Arlene Francis Center in Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa Occupy has asked Tim and I to make a presentation on foreclosures and give some training and answer questions about how do you motivate your area, how do you get your area signed up as a foreclosure prevention zone and for the solutions. We need people, anybody that wants to actually interact and go back to their areas and spread the news. We need you to attend, please. Tim, one more time, your contact information. OccupyPetaluma.com and click the Foreclosure Crisis tab. Tim, I'm going to put you on the spot, may I? You're a pastor. You're the first pastor that's been ever on my show. I want you to say a prayer for America. I'm glad you said it. I, I want to, can, can I, um, before I say the prayer, I just want to read this poem written by Reverend Martin Niemöller, who was put in a concentration camp by the Nazis, and he wrote almost 60 years ago, first they came for the communists, and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for me. And I just want to say to our loving God that help us find our voices and speak out with truth and love so that we can truly become the beloved community that Martin Luther King Jr. spoke of. Amen. 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 We'll see you in two weeks. Norma Duvall returns next Friday at this time slot. Happy New Year to all.